Welcome to New Hampshire's Wild Side. I'm Christina Lupi. And I'm Mark Beauchene. We'll take you behind the scenes of the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department to learn more about the people and projects of your Fish and Wildlife Agency. We'll also give you tips and tactics that you can use to make the most out of your time in New Hampshire's woods and waters. And along the way, we'll meet real people who love life outdoors. Now, let's discover more about New Hampshire's Wild Side. Uh, litter's getting ready. We got all our information. We feel good about that. There we go. We're getting our carry straps ready. See how, they, it, like, we have, what, 12 of us here, 13 of us? Yeah. There's plenty busy here. There's plenty busy That's working cool. with her. If we had stuff to package her up, splinter her uh, broken ankle, you think that'd be a good idea? Yeah, so we're at a berry conservation camp up at our uh, York Pond Fish Hatchery uh, in Berlin, New Hampshire. Uh, what we're doing here this week is about four days of junior conservation officer camp. It's a program where youth ages 14 to 17 uh, can come up and kind of do what we do as a CO and we show them all about it. <laughs> everything's got to move together, right? We'll keep everything together. Someone's going to grab the top of her jacket. Someone's going to support her neck. CO uh, Josiah Town and I came up with this idea. We actually attended Berry Camp as kids. Uh, which is which is nice because we can come back to where we we were as kids and kind of started our path towards being a CO and becoming a CO later on in life. So what we teach them is two days of, of non-stop classes, but all hands-on stuff. Everything from you know crime scene investigation of a deer kill, stalking fish, search and rescue, dive team, shooting sports. We teach them all that stuff. You're gonna be in that little crook. Yeah. If you have to move, move. I think it's probably an overlooking a fish. Did you see anything? Kind of all ties in. We teach all this stuff to tie into end of the week scenarios, live action scenarios that are acted out a little bit, but really what we would come across, we put the kids in that situation. So we did a, a search and rescue carry uh, where they put them in a litter, package the patient up, and carry them out for an extended time. We do surveillance on fishermen, and the fisherman breaks a bunch of laws, and they deal with them. And then we do a wrap up from each night scenario. We have like a poaching scenario or sitting on a field. The last scenario is where they actually arrest, search the person's truck, and come up with this nice plan. Remember the um, chain of custody? When we're doing that. We'll open this up. Look at that. So. And it seems like this year's kids that are even more involved. Like it was a, it was an extra week because we upped the years uh, age limit. But this year seems like really almost 95% of the kids want to be COs or have that interest in what we do. So the, the interest and the involvement is just all there. And to me, passion is knowledge, and, and these kids are passionate about what they want to learn and you know, leave here with a lot of knowledge. The flashlight was still on when we arrested him. We're all gonna go up here. We think that he knows that we're game ones. We think but I can't, I can't prove that in court. I can't say, well, he saw me. Because a lot of the time, um, I, have to t I have to say, stop, I'm a police officer, stop. This week to me is really like our career. You get a lot of self-reward out of it. You know, at the end of this week, no one really calls you up and says, oh, you did a terrific job. You know, to me, at the end of the week, they graduate, the kid comes up to you and looks you in the eyes, shakes your hand and says, that was awesome, the best week of my summer. I, now I know all about a CO and I really want to do it. What else can I do? You know, to me, that's the reward of it. We have the evidence, we have the evidence together. Use the hashtag BetterOutside when you share photos and videos showing how you connect with life outdoors. And don't forget to tag New Hampshire Fish and Game on Facebook and Instagram.
With over 975 lakes and ponds to play on, it's better outside because we're here connecting you to life outdoors. Now watch this. So two goals today, accuracy, and everybody has all 10 fingers when you leave, okay? Robin's a great local teacher and we happened to be chatting one day and I'd mentioned that I'm looking for um, a site, the best site for, on fish and game properties to locate an osprey nesting platform. But are they going like that? Yes. By chance, she had been working with her children to try and find a site to locate a platform. So it was a very synergistic meeting and we decided to work together. This has actually been a project in the making for quite a while, to be honest with you. Many, many years ago, I spoke with New Hampshire Fish and Game about uh, potentially getting the kids to do some monitoring projects around some osprey nests that were up and running. It was hard to get kids over to an osprey nest and then observe the nest without interfering with an osprey behavior. So this was long before the nest cam sort of became popular and accessible. I was actually speaking with a neighbor of mine and we were talking about putting up an, an osprey pole and having my eighth graders work with her to do that. At the same time that was happening, Rachel came again and said that she had money to put up the pole, so we decided to collaborate our forces and that's how we kind of merged back together to come, almost come full circle again with working with Rachel. Job. really like to get students involved any way we can in hands-on projects. So if there's something that I can do that helps them build things, has them go out into the environment, I'm, I'm all for that. Taken this board, this is the length board, and now we're trying to cut these two notches into the board. This is one of the great things about this project. It wasn't just building the platform with the students. We integrated math, art, and all other disciplines along the way. So I talked about the habitat characteristics of sites that had been used by Osprey, natural nesting sites throughout the seacoast. The kids looked at those parameters and used them to design the ideal height and location for the pole. This has been a project that I love because it involves energy in terms of Eversource, education, the teaching, and ecology or the environment, New Hampshire Fish and Game. And without those three coming together, this project never would have happened. Eversource kindly offered to put in the pole for us and they donated both poles. It's our property and the kids built the platform. So without the three very unique entities coming together, we wouldn't have had this opportunity. It's amazing. It was so fun to watch them pull that um, platform that the kids worked so hard to make up off the ground and then hoist it up onto that platform. It was really pretty fun to watch it go up and I just, it's so exciting that it's finally coming to fruition. There's so many people involved and so many people have come together to make this happen. It brings science to life for the students. It's one thing for me to sit and say, well, you know, let's design an experiment and then let's pretend to figure out what, what data we might get. They'll actually be authentically collecting the data. Um, it's also a reflection of how many scientists do their research nowadays. You can monitor sites remotely without having to disturb them by going in repeatedly. So they get to act more authentically like scientists. They get to investigate things in, in different ways and use different technologies. It kind of keeps them up with, with current times and investigations. We hope you enjoyed this episode of New Hampshire's Wild Side. Be sure to check back for new content at nhwildside.com. I'm Mark Beauchamp. And I'm Christina Lupi. Thanks for watching.